Former President Donald Trump is facing charges here in Washington, D.C., related to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. But a new report from House Republicans paints a different picture of that day compared to the findings of the House January 6th Select Committee. Joining us now is Terry Schilling, president of the American Principles Project. Welcome, Terry. Thanks so much for having me. Terry, can you help us break down that report a little bit? What's in it and why is this important? Well, the big thing that's coming out here is uh, it, it, it is apparently clear that Donald Trump's deputy chief of staff, uh, Anthony Ornato, uh, w gave witness and testimony that Donald Trump and Mark Meadows had requested uh, 10,000 National Guard troops uh, for January 6th. They were concerned about a clash between the pro-Trump uh, protesters and the anti-Trump protesters, and they were they were wanting more security. All of that was withheld from the January 6th committee uh, because, and it was basically exculpatory evidence, uh, which it really paints a picture that this whole thing, this whole January 6th committee had a predetermined narrative that they wanted to uphold and they got rid of anything uh, that uh, contrasts or contradicted what they were trying to find here. Yeah, the report from uh, Barry Laudermilk's office points out that there are multiple pieces of evidence that were either suppressed or destroyed or excluded from the January 6th Select Committee's report. And I think that 10,000 National Guard uh, story is important because about a month ago, when we had all of these media stories going around, they were claiming that Trump never requested the National Guard and that that was a fake narrative. And it turns out that that wasn't true. Now, another important allegation here is that one of the January 6th Committee's star witnesses, Cassidy Hutchinson, testified in front of the this big media circus about how Trump had tried to grab the wheel of the beast to redirect his Secret Service agents to the Capitol on that day. What did the Loudermilk report from House Republicans find out about her claims? Well, uh, Amber had found that uh, the driver uh, that she implicated in that story had actually given witness testimony that, uh, to the contrary, that Donald Trump never did any of that. He directly contradicted her claims and that was withheld. But Cassie Hutchinson's testimony was included in this report. Uh, Amber, I think that the real thing that uh, bothers me about this is that this was a sham committee. Right. It was it had a predetermined uh, narrative from the beginning. They got rid of anyone that was actually supportive of Donald Trump. That's not how, how you operate if you want to build a consensus. If you want to build a consensus, which is something you need in order to try and convict and prove to the American people that the former president is guilty of insurrection, uh, then you need consensus. This is a bare minimum. And instead, what we got was a propaganda committee uh, that was pushing lies and withholding evidence that contradicted their predetermined narrative. So this is this is a a blight on, on America, it's a blight on Congress and, and everything that's going on here. I mean, the driver also commented, you know, to keep it 100 here, the driver also commented that the former president clearly wanted to go to the Capitol. Um, reports like this and the findings, do you think they will have any effect on special counsel Jack Smith's case against the former president? Since there are, as you, you noted, a few discrepancies here, I think one of the most strong ones um, is probably the Cassidy Hutchinson extra story tale that literally went around through, you know, a game of telephone, one, two, three, she was the third person who heard it. Who really knows where the facts lie there? Um, do you think that any of this is going to affect the special counsel's case? Uh, it's hard to say, but it definitely doesn't help the special counsel's case. It only hurts it, and it show it's going to make uh, the jury and and the people making the decision about uh, where to come down with Trump on this. It's going to make them a lot more skeptical of the claims against him. You know, look, if you want to do this right, if you really want to get President Trump um, on this stuff, you have to go above and beyond to be accurate. This is a former president of the United States who's being accused of very serious crimes and essentially treason. Um, and it turns out that the, the more treason and sacks are the people that are putting together the sham committee and trying to falsely convict a, a, a former sitting president. I think it's interesting, too, that the committee apparently waited until months after Cassidy Hutchinson gave that public testimony to even interview any of the potentially corroborating witnesses, including the driver. There were two other uh, apparently firsthand witnesses who they didn't even bother to talk to in regards to that claim. 
Um, you talked about this as a sham committee, and, and I think it's important for viewers to understand that the reason why you're saying that is because Nancy Pelosi, of course, had control over which Republicans were allowed to sit on the committee. Republicans were not allowed to pick their own people to be on there. So the only Republicans who were on it were Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, who had already made their minds up that Trump had committed insurrection or engaged in an insurrection. Now we see that there are multiple people who refuse to comply with subpoenas, including Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon. Peter Navarro is now reporting to prison because he said he was not going to testify in front of the committee because of the fact that the makeup was so politically biased. No, that, that's exactly right. And, you know, there's a few interesting things here, which is, first and foremost, this is incredibly rare. I don't think this has actually been done in American history where uh, there are no uh, minority representatives or from the opposition included on the committee. There's typically when they have these types of committees to really dig deep, they produce a minority report. So they have a majority report that the majority of the committee agrees to, and it's usually partisan, and then they release a minority report. Well, this 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 isn't able to happen now, and Republicans have to go outside of the system, outside of the committee, to produce their own findings. Um, but the 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 real important reason why this is important is because people are going to prison. People are going to prison over a sham committee that was never open. And, and it's also interesting that Nancy Pelosi is all of a sudden allied with the Cheneys. Who would have predicted that? What do you think will this the, the effect will be long term? Um, obviously, this is a highly uh, politicized event. All of us saw what happened on January 6th. We've we've heard from the officers themselves. We've heard from those who were barricaded within their within their Senate offices and other chambers. Um, what do you think is going to be the aftermath? You know, we're still having this conversation now. We're years out of January 6th. Obviously, in the midst of an election cycle, uh, what is your take? Well, unfortunately for Democrats and fortunately for America, I think it's going to end up leading to the reelection of Donald Trump. Right. I think that the real problem here is that Democrats are following the same his hysterical playbook that they tried to follow in 2016, where they're trying to cast Donald Trump as this Nazi s figure, this Hitlerian uh, American figure. And the American people see through it. The American people are not stupid. They understand BS and they can sort through it. Now, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And so I think that, you know, this next election really is going to determine the future and what this, you know, what happens from here. I think Donald Trump will get reelected because of all of the fraudulent claims that are being made against him. But if he isn't, if he isn't reelected, then I'm even more worried because you're going to see a lot more of these sham committees and a lot more innocent people uh, being thrown into jail uh, for purely partisan uh, reasons through their weaponized federal government. Trump has 91 felony charges across four different jurisdictions. Um, he is in court case after court case, meanwhile trying to fundraise and campaign at the same time. Turning to another one of those legal battles, let's talk about New York for a bit. Um, the Manhattan DA has now suggested a 30-day delay to the hush money payments case against the former president. Remember, that was the case that alleged Trump's team falsified business records connected to hush money payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. That trial is scheduled to get underway later this month on March 25th. But the DA suggested he delay after the former president legal team complained that evidence had been withheld until the last minute. Terry, will this change affect the former president's campaign obligations as the presumptive nominee? No, I don't think so. I think he's going to carry on, and I think that's exactly the right thing. I think, listen, if, if Donald Trump was not a threat to the swamp, if he wasn't disruptive to the system, they wouldn't be making up all these allegations. I, I think, you know, it's important to note that allegations are one thing, and 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 these are all Democrats, right? When you when you start to get Republicans pressing charges against him and, and trying to take him to court and convict him, well, then we'll have something else. But right now, this is just, and I think the American people are seeing through this, this is what happens when you try to disrupt the swamp. There's a very powerful system in place. All the billionaires, all, all the major corporations, Hollywood, academia, everyone's lined up on the progressive side of this. Um, and you have to ask yourself, like, what is going on here that the billionaires and the rich class are, are now teaming up with Democrats? There's something awry here, and it, and it stinks. Well, one quick final question for you, Terry. We're almost out of time, but going back to this January 6th question, um, I think it's also important to point out that this exculpatory evidence is really key to the fact that Donald Trump was just, uh, Democrats just tried to remove him from ballots 
in places like Colorado and Maine. Thankfully, the Supreme Court said they couldn't do that, but they tried to remove him from these ballots by claiming that he had incited this insurrection. It turns out now they didn't even have all the evidence available to make a proper determination there. Thank goodness that the Supreme Court came down on the right side of this, right? I mean, we haven't seen Democrats try to kick a Republican off of the ballot for president since the 1860s, right? I think this really speaks to how divided and fractured and polarized America is right now. Um, but thank goodness that the Supreme Court uh, was a voice of calm and reason in this situation. Otherwise, we'd have quite the civil unrest on our hands right now. Terry Schilling from American Principles Project, thanks again for joining Rising. Thanks so much for having me, guys.